Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon and today I'm going to show you how to set up, play and review the game Cthulhu Wars Duel, a Sandy Peterson game by Peterson Games. So this is a two-player asymmetrical game in the Cthulhu Mythos, Mythos universe and there are a couple of characters you can play. So this is the dueling version, the two-player, two-character version of Cthulhu Wars, a very uh, prestigious and prolific and well-known uh, game and it's kind of an area control game first and foremost and there's a couple of characters you can play in this set you can't you can get other sets like extinction which is about the same price uh, i think it's the same price currently and you also basically get two characters you can also buy standees as well for other characters too so someone's going to be great cthulhu someone's going to be the black goat so are they having a great cthulhu down here and we're going to have the black goat out the way opposite you're going to have a map so you're going to take the map out and the aim of the game is to get the most points or basically um, to be well ultimately taking out your opponent so you are going to have a map like this now i've deliberately got the map quite zoomed in so as you see the camera can see the majority of stuff the reason why i'm not going to be zooming out further is i want to be allowing you to just kind of see the detail and the richness of this map in due course though i will be talking to you about this board but let's just show you how to start the game. You're going to have a pack of dice. I've also put in some Elder Signs here as well. There are 12 Elder Signs and there are a number of different tokens of different values. So you have ones, twos and threes. Three being the least common, one being the most and obviously two being that sort of interim quantity. So you place them all face down, smush them around, put them in a bag, however you like. I just like to leave them as a pool and off to the side. So as and when you're going to need them, you are going to be drawing those things up. You're also going to take some gates, so you need some gates to the side. So again, that's just in the side of the box. And the bag, uh, the bags that do come in the box, there's just one of them, but I've got an extra bag in here as well. And just to let you know, there are some similar mechanics to the game Invasion of the Brood, which you'll uh, sort of notice if you've played that game as well. You need to set up your standees. So you have the black goat here, that cosmic monster of hideous fertility, and some other characters relating to that. You're going to have the Great Cthulhu, the largest character, and like with the original Cthulhu Wars, there's also the tallest character. We've got a spare baggie for the black goat. And a baggie, of course, for the green character, which is the great Cthulhu. And now I'm just going to sort of put things out on display, the things you're going to be needing for this game. So, you've got those ten dice, move them off to one side. You're going to have various characters as and when you're going to be playing them. You're going to take your character marker and you're going to place it top left of the board which is just up here. So it's gonna go on zero doom. You'll be doing the same, of course, for the black goat. You're also gonna be setting up on your starting location. Here's the glyph representing um, Cthulhu. So again, if you're playing as Cthulhu, you're gonna be doing this. So you're placing out six of these cultists. They're kind of like your, your energy or your power, basically markers that can help you in the game. And there are ways your opponent can get power off you as well. So you're gonna need a power marker. That's gonna go down here. And you're going to place that initially, I recall, on number eight. It does actually tell you where you start. You start on eight power. You're going to be starting with six acolytes, these guys down here, and a controlled gate. So now you're going to need to go on those gates I mentioned, taking it a controlled gate, and it's going to go in this location. Now, speaking about these locations, we have Jersey Reef down here, and they've got this lantern. This is the same location as Charles River. So for all intents and purposes, it wraps around in the same location. Same occurs with Mystic River as well, and Mesotonic River and Devil's Reef. So just be aware, these things do kind of work in, uh, in symmetry, in parallel. The Black Goats, just to let you know, is going to be starting over here, but I'm just going to keep that map empty for the time being. So I've talked about the standees. Now you can get the massive versions. Obviously, it's about almost 10 times more in price. Of course, you do get all the other factions. But quite frankly, you can quite easily see that that's a tall figure. And you can actually see the rest of the board quite cleanly as well. Okay, so like I said, the aim of the game is to ultimately win. And there's multiple things you can be doing. There are four main phases to the game. There's the action phase. This is where you're using your marker to basically spend action points. And like a game of chess, you might ideally want to ensure that you can get your, your opponent down to zero action points and you've got some spare to basically take back-to-back -back turns. So think about when you want to do it. So what can you do? Well, you could recruit a cultist. That's one thing you can do in your turn. You're going to spend one of your power points to do that. As you can see, they're all in play currently, so you won't be doing that presently. 
You could summon a monster. So you've got various monsters down here and it tells you the costs on here, what they're going to be. So Acolytes, we've brought them all out. They're gonna cost you one. We have the deep one for here, for example, it's gonna cost you one. You have Shogoth, which is gonna cost you two and Starspawn is gonna cost you three. Cthulhu is gonna cost you 10 initially. Once it's wiped out, it's gonna cost you four to bring back. And I'll come back to combat in a moment. So if you want to awaken the Great One, as I said, that is going to cost you obviously 10. Uh, in this case, playing Cthulhu. It will vary for, for obviously Black Gate. And by all means, if you want to know more about Black Gate, uh, let's just say that, you know, hit that thumbs up, hit that like button, um, comment. By all means, I'll obviously tell you more and more about what I think about playing as Black Goat. And also check out the comments and descriptions. Hit the subscribe button and that like button. Please share. Hit the notification, of course, when I'm doing further updates as well. Okay, so another thing you can be doing is you can again choose to uh, create a gate. So these gates are important, as you'll see in due course. You've got to create it where you have a cultist. And um, so let's say you're going to go there. But before you do that, we're going to move on to moving. So you can spend one power to move. It's one power per unit's move. And in this instance, you could move here for one. So let's say we've already spent something else. We've spent another one. And now we're going to spend three to bring out a gate. Now, automatically, they do control the gate, which you'll see is of use. And now, uh, because you're great getting more power back from it, you can also spend one to battle. So imagine you've got the black goat here, you're battling. Well, you're engaging the battle, so you're spending an action point to engage and taking on the, um, this great one over there. Okay, and uh, lastly, you can spend one power to capture a cultist. So that's another thing you can be doing as well, capturing your opponent's cultists. Something we didn't do in the last game. Lastly, you could just pass and you lose all your power. Now, why lose all your power? Well, let me tell you this. It's all coming down to the fact that, apologies for that, different uh, setup here today, is you have what's called here this, this doom track, this decay track. So you're decaying your opponents by basically passing earlier. They're spending more effort than you and you're just you know decaying them, which means you're ultimately having to spend some decay before you start spending more power. So it could be quite a nice thing to do. If you know your opponent's got one or two powers left while well, you're decaying they're obviously a halving or in this case reducing the amount of stuff they've left based on two again if they have three they're spending one decay and then they can have two power left and again bringing out a gate is going to cost them three so you now know they can't do that so we also have something down here uh, which i will talk about rituals of annihilation and that's going to be down here in position five let's just move this up the board now Okay, so now let's move on to uh, the gather power phase. So once you spend all your power, that's been done. I'm just gonna move this like this for the time being. And uh, what you can now do is, so everyone's out of power, you now need to be gathering power phasing. So now this return the decay marker, so we left it in the bag for now, we don't need to worry about it, just to keep it in shot, but that would be returned to zero. You're gonna spend one power per cultist. So you'll be gaining power for each cultist you have in play. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And the way we read this is that you get two power per control gate. So you have two, four, five, sorry. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now my power goes back up to ten for the next round. Additionally, you're going to get one power per abandoned gate. So if one happens to be abandoned, you're going to get one as well. And also, if you happen to have anything to do with Cthulhu, you might get additional stuff too. Okay, and lastly, there is what's these spell books, which is a very, very interesting part of the game. So you're then going to determine who starts first based on power. So if you happen to be first last round, you can say if you want to go first or not. And then you move on to the doom phase, which is optional. That's this thing along here. So you can say, well, now I've got my power regenerated to 10. I can spend five and now I can see it's going to cost six next time. So I'm spent five and then I'm increasing my doom, which let's move up here. I've now gained some doom and the doom is equivalent to basically the amount of control gates you have. So I currently have two, and I've got two doom. Aim of the game, reach 30. If I can reach 30 for you, then I can immediately win that game in the particular phase that I'm in. And remember, there are four phases. So you could do it in the doom phase. Of course, your opponents, if uh, you happen to go first, can respond. And that's where these elder signs could be of use. Because any time you can actually flip them over and say, ah, I've increased my, my doom by one. But naturally, you don't want to do that towards the end of the game. I happened to have six at the end of the game. They didn't have any threes. My opponent actually had a three. Okay, so that's other things we can talk about. Well, let's talk about battling. So if you want to battle, uh, you saw my sheet here. So in this case, uh, let's say the deep one, he has one. So we have a deep one here and it's going to be trying to battle. So I'm rolling one die 
against, uh, let's say, uh, the black coat. And I need to be rolling a six, basically. I can't believe it. I didn't roll a single six, I don't think, really, yesterday. So I roll a six, and that would actually kill us off. Now, um, if I don't roll a six, I roll, say, a five, then what happens is it basically suffers pain, and it's going to move back one space. And the black goat's player can choose where it moves back to. That's something else it can do. Apart from that, ones, twos, and threes don't do anything. A four also happens to uh, involve pain, and it moves backwards too. Multiple characters, if you have multiple monsters that you're controlling, you can assign what damage is taken by what creature. Now, the most fun part of the game is the these spell books. There are various spells that you can basically uh, trigger. So ultimately, if you're the first person to, um, in the first Doom phase, say, so I'm guaranteed to get this, I'm going to take one of my spell books, I can choose which one to use, and it allows me to do something else. So I can basically replace Acolytes, if I've got any spare in my pool, with one of my opponents, which is quite strong. Um, but there are various things you can be doing. And the aim of the game is as soon as all six are done in, and initiates unlimited battle as well. So you can be battling all over the map for a single action point. Now, the two things to be aware of, again, trying to get to 30 to win the game or instant death is the another option over here. So you can try and go up here instead. So that pretty much summarizes how to play the game. Uh, what do I think of it? Well, this is a, a 44 pages in here, of which 35 pages are core rules. Um, it's very easy to read, but it is detailed. Um, it could definitely be summarized similar to this back page in a two or three pages. Um, I think if you go on a website like Board Game Arena, when you're playing games online, uh, there's a nice synopsis down below. And a lot of it, if you do want to double check stuff, as detailed as it is, I think this could be uh, probably about a third of the length it is. Um, it has examples, um, and that's fine, but it does talk about some examples which won't be these core characters, which is, again, absolutely fine. I just don't think it necessarily needs that amount of detail. Again, I like the look of it. I like the way that you're powering up and you can try to control gates because whoever controls the most gives you a bit more power. I've heard that the Black Goat is harder to win at, but I happened to lose at, as Cthulhu yesterday, so I don't think there's any issues with imbalancing there. I happen to have a score of 24 to 40, uh, 32, um, that happened to be that this triggered the end of the game. Uh, again, some people might not like if it's pure dice, but again, it depends which character you're bringing out to try and get more dice. Trying to use your spell books. Uh, maybe once you've played both characters, you're going to be familiar with what both characters do and being aware of how you want to work with it. And of course, for those other characters, you can start playing in different locations as well. So that's been a summary. That has been Cthulhu Wars Jewel. Um, any other questions, any other comments I have to say, again, please check out the comments and descriptions and subscribe to see future videos that, of course, may well bring on uh, maybe a playthrough. Well, let me know what you think. Like I said, all the best and bye for now.